Okay. Okay. Thank you. And uh, it's a great pleasure. So this talk, uh, in a very broad sense, is about basic of theories. And uh, anyone in the audience should not be so foreign to the idea of space of theory. So these are spaces where underlying points are from the field theory satisfy some condition. So I can have a quantum field theory here, and maybe uh, there's another component with another quantum field theory. One benefit of talking in this language is that uh, we cannot do match pairs, many physical statements. For that talk before, without knowing the structure of the space, we may want to um, consider whether there's some RG flow connecting. But then if we know that they actually live in different components, uh, maybe uh, we will decide that that's actually not uh, interesting or useful thing to explore uh, to try to build, uh, construct any RG flow structure between. And some famous example of space of use, of course, would include the landscape. Which is a spin of theories, uh, roughly, uh, that can be constructed from string theory classification. Another example that many people here uh, love, uh, this one, then, namely the spin of theories that cannot be unified with the uh, gravity. So, um, if you have this space, then, um, and we we'll present this to a mathematician. Uh, the first thing that he or she wants to ask is that, well, um, there are a lot of tools that we can use to study spaces. Why not apply these tools? For example, so then the first thing to do um, be uh, looking at the homotopy groups of this space. And physicists then may say that, well, actually, we are in a sense, looking at the form of groups. Because, for example, we talk about invariants of quantum of field theory. So, what are invariants? Invariants are, in a sense, functions of type zero of this space. So, the target can be some uh, to be the ring of integers. Complex numbers or even uh, formal Q series with some additional variables. Okay, uh, let's speak even louder. But then, of course, they are uh, higher. Uh, nice. What are these? Well, this looks like perhaps um, environments of families. that are uh, not so much explored, actually. Uh, there are some, uh, uh, well, discussion that actually is about environmental families, but uh, it's not having the use to study physical property of the reality. Sorry, Luke, could you perhaps explain, you say, environment a function from on pi zero to Z of, uh, what, what is so the So here, there? this is uh, uh, that's one possible field where uh, this function take value. Okay. For example, we uh, sometimes talk about Certain supersymmetric computer functions, uh, like supersymmetric index, then these are, well, a refinement of integers. So you could imagine that it's basically integer, but then uh, there are some refinements so that is integral Q series or. Okay, so you mean, you mean a series, uh, like a power series in Q? Yeah, that would be an example. There can be invariants that are C values, D values, or values in some kind of other portion values. Two for that. So, um, so if a mathematician asks, what do we know about this environment families? Um, this will say that, well, this space is actually quite complicated, and maybe uh, we can, well, uh, we are uh, hardly uh, getting a complete set of environments. So, uh, 
por muy dice bueno sabes in the in one um, particular set of views, namely two dimensionals, two point one. There is a very strong mathematical conjecture about what this space should be that can provide answer to this question, to this question, and many other questions. And that's what I'm uh, going to uh, survey first. So we'll be looking at 2D Zilkama 1 series. So Zilkama 1 means that they have the minimal amount of supersymmetry that is allowed in two dimensions. So they have some supercharge. And the square of this would be derivative with respect to the debug variable. And we're looking at a good to be the combined series. For example, we maybe want the theory to be unitary and we want the particular function on the torus to be well defined. But we are not just looking at conformal theories. So therefore, uh, probably we don't want to talk about our genus, but they don't want yet. The torus, but they don't these are um these are UV complete quantum field theories in 2D? Well, these are just quantum field theories um defined at a certain let's say scale that uh, makes sense at that scale. So we don't uh, care too much yet about what is UV complete. You're including effective field theories or no? Yeah, we are including so you are what sort of theory as long as they are good in certain sense, like you yeah. have a well defined pattern. So this is the um, space of theories. And you, you have any example where you have a good theory which has no UV composition. So um, one can define many sigma model with string targets. And I don't quite, uh, and I can imagine for some of the examples, they have UV composition, but maybe for others, they maybe not have UV composition. So yeah, so in general, I think I would include uh, all uh, theories. At this moment. So then, um, you know, actually, sorry, the gas, yes. I'm, I'm a little bit confused about that point because if you're allowing effective field theories, then I would think that that space might deformation retract onto the space of CFTs by the RG flow. But if you just yeah, make UV complete, then it won't deformation retract onto the space of CFTs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I um, do intend to believe that this space deformation retract space of uh, it does that yeah oh interesting. so probably one good way of studying this is to look at CFTs and their uh, flows okay. that probably is uh, a useful strategy but um, we know that there are many CFTs in 2d and their RG flow can be complicated so maybe you will say that well if we're looking at this space of theory it's also going to be complicated yes yeah. can ask about that so there could be like two different CFTs which are just connected by going up and down RG flow so it's not really contracting Yeah, but you can you certainly maybe expect that it can build some cell complex by looking at self and their slopes. So indeed, uh, yeah. Okay. So and unitarity is not an issue here. So uh, here we are uh, looking at unitary theories as a part of the list of good. Actually, it's not quite clear to me if we uh, go beyond that and consider non-unitary theory, what would happen? So maybe, well, I don't know. That also track and so we do into theories in some sense but um, um, say too much about that okay so later you decide that this space is uh, also fairly complicated uh, it took a while to uh, understand non supersymmetric theory and the common theory is not uh, usually discussed the standard text but interestingly there's a very uh, strong conjecture by Sojan uh, Hatner, so the work of Eagles. And their conjecture uh, can be stated in a very concise way. So the space of theory is Is 
uh, factor for uh, EMF. So that's uh, maybe the shortest uh, way of stating that conjecture. Uh, let me try to decode what the meaning of this conjecture. So, what's the uh, meaning of this word uh, spectrum? Spectrum is in the sense of algebraic topology, and TMF here is a generalized homology theory. So, just like a commodity theory, uh, one can talk about commodity groups um, and in manifold uh, X. And being a spectrum means that to uh, get these groups, one just needs to consider a homotopy class of map from X to this space. So, so, so yes. can you explain what is the physical interpretation here? Is like the space of parameters for quantum theory, or what is X here? Um, space of parameters is part of that. So, but you could imagine that uh, theories that are not parameter by same variable can also be uh, connected in some class. So that's uh, that bigger space where you put every uh, such theories. So. Here, yeah, there's the grading. So let me maybe say what this grading is. So for 2D zero command theory, uh, we actually uh, have some hilarious. One hilarious is the gravitational number. And that's the integral. I want to know that D. So, what is it? So, if we are actually talking about conformal field theory, then this will be two times C like minus C like. In general, this is uh, uh, describing a perturbative uh, anomaly uh, associated with the uh, T1. That's the uh, a Cartesian class in two dimensional higher it is a right thing to describe the perturbial anomaly. It will describe the coefficient of this group. Anomaly is binomial of this theory. Is that it's, that's 45? That's 45 or yeah, 45. Unfamiliar number for not 48, huh? Oh, it was 48, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so what you're saying here is, is this is space of quantum field theories, and you're asking yourself what kind of things are invariant when you form it, and one thing that is invariant certainly is the gravitational anomaly, and yeah, one so is trace of R squared. Right? Yeah, gravitational anomaly is uh, one particular invariant, right? For this space, there are more questions that can be asked, for example, about how groups. And in fact, this is actually a way stronger statement than ever statement about this, and this alone. So we'll uh, gradually decode this. So. So, 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 so just to be clear, you're saying that no, there, there are two CFTs with the same gravitational anomaly and you can still not connect them via articles. Right. Okay. That's uh, exactly right. And that may be the second point, but uh, first. May, may I ask a question? Yes. So when you say T is a spectrum of TMV, what do you mean by is? Is this like a, what, what kind, is it, it means that there is a map. Well, what type of is iso isometry or homotopy or what, what is this? So the precise, uh, maybe a slightly precise way of saying this, is that this space represents this general -like commodity theory precisely in this sense. So there is a general -like commodity theory uh, that can associate to this any space some commodity groups. And then that commodity groups can be uh, is given by just homotopy part of this map. So this okay. is a spectrum in the sense so of is right? means yeah. homotopic. Does is means homotopic? Yeah, yeah. It is a spectrum. There can be a different spectrum representing the same theory, but they are not necessarily weakly homotopic. Homotopic. 
Does this make sense? So, um, so, uh, so please feel free to ask if there are uh, other questions. But before that, uh, let me maybe just say what's the implication of this. So there are gravitational anomalies, and um, you expect that two theories with different gravitational anomalies should definitely live in different kinetic components. So you can decompose this space T as a disjoint union of subspaces. Each a subspace is uh, labeled by integer d, and that's actually where this gradient comes from. If you want to look at the homotopy group in uh, degree d, you want to use uh, the component with the uh, well, uh, like along the other d or minus d, maybe minus d. Um, I'm, I might be preempting you a little bit, but. Is there an intuitive part of being a spectrum mean that you know T D plus one or T D minus one, whatever is the loop space of T D? Is there an intuitive way of seeing why the loop space has to do with shifting the gravitational anomaly by one or something? Yeah, yeah, that's an extremely good question. So um, basically, um, you can look at all examples where um, the space of theory form um, the spectrum. One uh, universal thing is that. These are class of theory where uh, S1 sigma model is well defined. So um, this mass between uh, components with different gravitational anomalies uh, should be due to the fact that you can turn somehow target S1 into um, uh, S1 in the space of theories. So therefore, um, you can contrast some math between spaces with different uh, gravitational anomalies. And maybe hope that that's actually some uh, homotopy, weak homotopy equivalence. So, okay. um, this actually, uh, now you may want to ask whether this itself, uh, TD itself, has many kinetic components. And we know that in general, in general, they, they are indeed the components because they are friendly variants, so that's really clear. What is the relationship? That's the map from um, i zero of this space, or maybe I just look at here with perfect normally D to the space of modular form in degree uh, T over two, obtained by sending a particular theory to its elliptic genus. That's a function of Q, uh, but normalized to uh, with this factor, the dedicated beta function to a uh, power D. This is to just uh, to make sure that we're actually getting the standard, uh, the uh, modular form according to the standard mathematical notion. So this will be weakly for more than modular form, generated by familiar transactors. Sorry about the isentan series. Yes. Maybe you can also write down the, the usual formula for the elliptic genus, like with as a trace, like more familiar in particle physics. Like this is a partition function of the torus and q is just e to the two pi i, right? Yeah, uh, that's right. So this is just the torus cardinal function. The torus cardinal function itself is rather well, different way of saying this. Uh, one can look at the Hilbert space on a circle, and that's a particular trace. Or let's say that this is first cardinal function uh, with uh, a particular spin structure, with a particular uh, spin structure. That's that the fermions are periodic, periodic. Right, right, right. That's, uh, and that's the trace of minus one to the f of, of q. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Uh, Oh, well, California, uh, don't want to use L0 yet because we have not that So, right. Um, so, these are a familiar uh, isentan series with integer coefficient. This is a moderate discriminant, and they are subject to uh, relations for Q. 
So in the case, I'm just you, you read a bit uh, larger because of the camera, I'm not sure. Yeah, larger in every sense, visual <laughs> and audio. <laughs> okay, so I can uh, deal with the uh, volume part. Uh, the video part, well, this part is uh, perhaps rather uh, familiar to some people and also you are, it, it, relevant for the rest. So I hope that's fine. So, okay. Why I'm saying that uh, this leads to many uh, strong predictions. So let's look at prediction number one that I'll claim simply by uh, taking I to be a point. So the mathematician's definition of topological modular form is more than just sigma model. Right. So they have a slightly different way of defining uh, topological modular form. They look at the modular stack of elite uh, of elite curves, and maybe consider this not just over uh, complex numbers, but over more general fields, including uh, finite fields. And then they can try to define some uh, infinite spectrum over that uh, space. So it's a very technical definition. So are there examples? They have an understanding of why they needed to do this. If you just restrict the space of manifolds, would they not be enough? Are they missing classes? What is the what is the interpretation of what they are doing in our language? Yeah, that's I think a question that is not so well understood. So why this uh, elite curve over finite fields are even relevant? Elliptic curves over finite fields. Yeah, basically, what their definition. Uh, differ from what one they really expect in physics by, by finite field. And i so the, but the space that the but and there are examples where they are not represented homology classes or representative theory quote unquote theories which are not represented by sigma models. Oh yeah so um for sigma models the graphical anomaly will be positive so uh, there are also classes in the negative so these are not represented the map from, I mean, for, when we maybe to say what Comer was asking, right, is that there's a map from string boardism to TMF. Yeah. And is that map like surjective on homotopy groups if you use the not periodic version of TMF? But you use the no, also, so, uh, oh, uh, like, can you represent everything as the elliptic genus for a particular string manifold? Yeah, so um, so there are different versions of TMF. Um, so there is uh, this TMF, and the other TMF. Indeed, there is a mass from, uh, let's say, pi star M string. Um, so I could not think of any class here that actually does not come from here. But, but this is a smaller than this guy. So, there are more uh, physical theories that turn out to be not just connected to sigma. So, um, right. So, what happens if I take uh, x to be a point? So, if I take x to be a point on one side, I'm having um, MS star at points. In any John Michael model theory, this refers to as a ground green. So, by uh, definition, uh, this, according to that equation, it's also at zero. So, and if you look at this, this is the ring of a lot of model forms. <laughs> And this is uh, different from the ring of modular forms. In particular, there's a map from the ring of topological modular forms to that of modular forms. And this is not uh, injected. And there are some things like vertical. And they are all portions of this. So what does this mean? So that's the 
classification number one, there are actually new variants. Uh, question? Yes. So, so the right hand side of this uh, uh, equation you wrote on the top, on the very right hand side of the equation, so there is no star. What's a star on the right hand side? Yeah, and here? No, 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 that on the top. Oh, on the top, right. So this has. Yeah, so, so the first two, two factor has star in it. Yeah, that's right. So T has different components. So that's in a sense a gray list. So star is like a gravitational anomaly? Yeah, that's exactly right. So is the first, first equation, is that the theorem? The first equation? So, so this is a definition. So this is what we call the ground ring. And I just didn't know this, like I said, yeah, man. That's oh, a, that's a definition. Yeah. Oh, OK. So but I see. But it's a, it's, it's a conjecture that uh, there's, there's a Pi star of TMF is pi zero of T star. Yeah, so this part is a uh, uh, follow real of the conjecture. It follows okay. from this more. Uh, okay, so that's a refinement of the conjecture. <laughs> okay. Well, um, right, so it's one uh, maybe consequence of the Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, it's, it's an example of the conjecture. Yes. Yeah, okay. that's right. So, one implication is that there are actually new uh, variants because there are portions and um, th this looks very different from the like, anything like the elliptic genus. So what are these? Well, there's actually a map from S star as that's a sphere spectrum. And because, well, uh, there's a categorical spectrum and that's like the initial object for any spectrum, you would have such a map. So, so what is this? Well, there are some familiar um, objects here. For example, if I is looking at um, Taiwan of S, that's the D2. And the product of this is sometimes denoted by eta. That's associated with the whole vibration of the three sphere. And there's another guy in three. Sorry, dude, by, by pi one of S, what you mean is pi k plus one of a of S k or something like that. So here yeah, it's a stable version of this. So for example, uh, for uh, eta, uh, we know that there is a uh, uh, type four of S3. Maybe write a bit larger. Oh, uh, can let me use this part. Let me first look at pi uh, three of S two, and because of both vibrations, uh, we know that this actually. So what happens with uh, pi four of S three? Well, we know this is D two. Uh, this is the uh, group where the width anomaly uh, is uh, take place in, and there's actually a match between them, known as suspension match. And in that case, this is the uh, integer uh, obtained by taking integer and take its uh, mod two uh, random. And then it becomes stable. And we will refer to that as type one. Similarly, for this guy, there is a uh, whole uh, vibration involving the seventh here. All of this live here. And they actually map not truly really here. So there is also new and eta and bunch of other things. These are uh, actually going to be new invariants for um, 2D token one theory. That's the maybe surprising prediction number one. So is it is it wrong if there's an material extension there or like for, from the homotopy groups of the spheres and and, and the molar form, can you recover everything in DMF? Um, I would say basically, uh, yes. So, so, so the, it's kind of like there's no, oh, oh, I see, because the right hand side is kind of like in your stuff. So, it's not gonna... mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, indeed. So, the extra stuff here is seeing that uh, most of them. Uh, so, so, so I, so I, I know. There's, a scheme, there's, there's no torsion in MF. All oh, right. So, right. here, there's no torsion. Okay. Yeah. So, so um, 
this is the free part, but this is the motion part. Okay. It seems that motion parts are all uh, coming from okay. they did this. So. Uh, that's sorry, that's not quite right. The the yeah, torsion in TMF does not all come from the sphere, but it yes, does. I should say that. Well, um, yeah, yeah, I should uh, qualify this statement. So it's not quite right that every torsion comes from here. So the um, ones that I know maybe physical equivocation of uh, come from this. And maybe the, the other ones are just uh, slightly more mysterious. So, any other questions? Have a question. So I, yeah, I think Julian has a question. Please, Julian, just send me that. So, so let me comparison with a uh, more familiar co-bodism group or bodism group. So for bodism group, for example, we may consider some uh, d-dimensional uh, manifold d. So there's an the input d, and we want to have some structure of the manifold. Let's say g, maybe some symmetry or higher symmetry, or even higher group symmetry. So this the input is d and g. So in order to compute such a Bodhism group, uh, then there is a relation between this Bodhism group to a homotopy group of certain spectrum. Uh, for example, the free hopping used the medicine Tillman spectrum. So there's a pi of lower D of this medicine Tillman NT G is equal to this Bodhism group omega lower D of this G or BG. So uh, and the output of this will be some uh, abelian group and actually finite or integer z, c n or z class. So there's a torsion and free part. So in use in, in all this TMF, can you remind me the input? What, what do you need to input? Is a topological space or in, in comparison with like Buddhism group? And is the output always also an abelian group? To z, z n, finite z n, z. Is that a classification? Well, and so here, uh, <laughs> these are all rings and they are, well, by definition, also a building group. Um, and here we're not considering general um, vertical. So these theories may or may not be topological. Well, in general, the interesting theories are not topological. So we are only allowed to consider this, for example, on class space or torus. But there are um, multiple interesting connections to the story of um, like vertical. For example, here, uh, string vertical already show up. But um, for the interest of time, maybe let me know. Uh, go into that direction, but I would say that there are indeed uh, multiple connections to the story uh, coming from uh, using a word to classify invertible, um, sorry, a general um, TQFT. So let me may may maybe say um, another um, prediction uh, from uh, this conjecture. So we have this new environment. Then you maybe say, well, um, they are new invariants, but maybe uh, they are always zero. Would that be the case? Well, that cannot be the case. Um, every uh, TMS that passes that can be represented. That's basically. Uh, Saying that this is actually isomorphic, so it's not a map in one direction. So, in particular, this new uh, ETA uh, all has to be realized by physical theories. So, can this be true? So, uh, we actually uh, test this. Test it in the sense that we try to scan through um, TMF classes with a D of true, small or large. And we find um, the dictionary between GMF uh, classes and theories. So this uh, can be found in a table, uh, in a paper uh, together with Kuhlman and Fabrizio. Um, You're, you're, you're testing the conjecture by showing that for each class in, in this in a group, you can actually find the CFT, which let's say corresponds to that, right? Yeah, exactly. Except that I'm not just looking at CFT, but uh, some of them are C1 models. Did, did this, okay. did this lead to any new 
uh, like really unknown theories, uh, like trying to work this out? So um, there are classes that uh, we actually can, don't know how to reproduce when we go beyond this range. And I will say that these certainly represent some new theories that we actually don't know how to utilize. So, providing a statement number three, well, because this statement uh, is actually uh, very precise, we know everything about homotopy groups of uh, the state of theory. That's going to be the same as zero. In last case, the last one uh, that I'm going to talk about uh, the focus of the remaining uh, part of this talk. So, for this map. We mentioned before that is not injective, so there are new environments. It's also not uh, subjective. So there are some algorithms you can get from this, and some you cannot get from this. So there are constraints. Typical. We can do this. In other words, if you write a model form, it may or may not come to a PMF. Therefore, it may or may not be utilizable as the unity genus of a clinical theory. So, so you're saying there's more invariant partition functions that do not arise as the partition function of any physical state. That's correct. So what kind of model form can be realized? So it turns out that we can realize any power of uh, C4. That's uh, one of the isotopes series over there. So one cannot realize uh, C6. Instead, one can only realize uh, two times C6. But how about delta? One cannot realize delta. It turns out that only 24 delta. How about delta square? I still want to know your nice space, but delta square, delta q, I still know uh, eight delta q. So, so forth. So let me summarize this. So, so maybe for, for those that are not familiar, it, it's good to say that the C4, C6, and Delta are particular homomorphic functions that are the basis of the ring of modular forms, right? Yeah, exactly. So they are the uh, basis for the ring of uh, weak ring homomorphic integral modular forms. So uh, and it satisfies some relation. And C4 and Delta is probably familiar to shrink this better, right? C4 is the take function of the eight, and Delta is eight of 24. Yeah, yeah. That's and C6, right. I don't think there's an easy explanation, but it's C6. Well, um, I'm not sure whether this is the uh, easy conversation, but there's a. Uh, That's the one which I have positive and negative signs, right? Hmm? C4 and delta, I mean, C6 has a positive, and, well, that one over delta is positive definite, but C4 is positive definite. But C6 has mixed signs, right? Uh, I think that's right. Okay, yeah. okay. so, um, so. We want to see some constraints. So if I uh, propose a potential theory with partition function C6, uh, well, this conjecture by mathematician tells us that uh, we should not actually expect that's a physical theory. So what is coefficient? So the coefficient is such that uh, if I multiply this with C, so we have got some coefficient aka. Uh, delta to the k. Then uh, 24 has to uh, divide uh, k times A. A slightly different way of saying this is that 24 over uh, GTD A among 24 has to divide. Oh, 
basically some constraints. Um, why are they uh, interesting? You may first want to say that, well, this is something uh, specifically for 0 comma 1 theory, and I don't really work on 0 comma 1 theory. But then one quick remark is that very pedantic one. Uh, 0 comma 2 theory are 0 comma 1 theory. This theory is also 0 comma 1 theory. 0 comma 2 Well, any supersymmetric theory in two dimensions are different. These constraints would also apply to uh, this class of theories. And maybe then you say that actually don't work in two dimensions. But then uh, higher dimensional supersymmetric theories. Well, uh, they, when they just view that 2D 0 comma 1 theory is probably not a good theory, so one can compact it much. And then they can lead to multiple 2D 0 comma 1 theory. So these constraints can be applied to uh, uh, for any proposed higher dimensional with many theory. Remark number three that uh, perhaps most relevant to us is that uh, I will get that are purely for something. Also, because you can just put that on the left side and let the uh, supercharger to add true. So that's a very cheap way of getting. Um, to the zero comma one theory, and you are uh, maybe you want to ask that. Well, this looks uh, too convenient. So maybe all the interesting story are going to get trivialized once we look at either it was higher supersymmetry, you have a higher lambda, or tyro CFT. That's possible, but actually, uh, when they come to be trivial. What we found with uh, the amazing collaborator uh, in Xian Lin that this is actually not going to be the case. But look at Cairo CFTs, and it seems that these constraints are still non trivial and can have application. So, what we are going to look at is and part of the definition of Gomez CFT is that the central charge is going to be 24 times the integer. That integer is now denoted by n. And Gomez CFT has the simplest possible solution. So uh, it's given by uh, 1 times 1 equals 1. And as um, through comma, one theory, we're going to put it on the left only. So the left moving sum charge will be 24n. The right moving sum charge will be uh, zero. So the gravitational anomaly will equal to minus 28 will be 45 instead times n. So What do we know about uh, partition function? Well, in general, uh, based on modularity, the partition function is going to be a polynomial of the day function. And 
to get. Um, well, modular form to compare with this, we we'll actually need to um, normalize this by a power of um, theta. So the theta to my head. 48 and, and e to a power 24, that's actually delta. So this looks like So the first term will look like B zero delta minus two n plus blah blah blah. So it actually won't be constrained for the other terms because that you will now show you um, uh, C4. But for the first term, uh, this involve only a delta over delta. So therefore uh, P0 has to be divisible by a certain number. So I'm trying to say that minus 2n or that represents 2n has to be divisible by 24. Or alternatively, 24 over GCP or 2n that has to be divide to zero. And what is this number? Depending on n, uh, it takes value in this list. One, that's why n is hundred to zero. Well, that's why it's hundred to plus minus one and six. Four, three, twelve. This is mod twelve. Yes. Okay. Minus six are the same, and these are. There are some questions that I want to not ask. This will look from uh, this kind of flow from some prediction of the mathematicians who may or may not understand so well uh, physics. So, one can uh, drive away that whether they are indeed uh, satisfied, whether there could be counter examples. Whether I can construct a physical theory that actually does not satisfy this constraint. That would tell us that this conjecture uh, is right for problems. Oh, yeah. So, and then another question that can be asked is uh, whether this uh, constraint is uh, sharp, whether it can be saturated. So, if the conjecture is correct, then we know that every gamma class is represented by a 0 comma 1 theory, but not necessarily by a homomorphic CFT. So if we're working in the world of homomorphic CFT, uh, this constraint may or may not be sharp. This is something that makes perhaps interesting in uh, testing. And then we can ask whether there can be application. It's an example. The first uh, example are um, that is that This is the given self rule. Of dimension um, 24. Oh, yeah. And it is okay. 
And then you, you go through that list, you find that indeed they are all divisible. Right. Well, and that uh, is also saturated. Then we can move to um, the case of NFO2 and there, the problem is that uh, maybe there's no complete classification. What one have instead um, are constructions. For example, one interesting class of theories, which are orbital. Uh, constructed by taking a lattice and then applying orbital in that with lattice on orbital. So um, by me, this is uh, there are multiple work on this. And for example, there are, there is a very uh, large class of examples given by Junoud uh, and Keller. What we find is that indeed by n equal to two, um, twelve always divide is zero prime, but n equal to three and eight always. So the constraint is actually satisfied, but it's actually not sharp. It's uh, not saturated by a factor of two. You have to uh, find a six divide this, uh, four divide this, you know, equal to three. So the last example is 
So the previous example uh, tell us that, well, it seems that it's hard to produce some example. Um, and then in some cases it's sharp, in some cases it's not, which is roughly what we expect. So we can ask whether this constraint has applications. When you say to rule out uh, some proposed theories, one interesting class of theory is that we can apply this constraint. So, so they have the property that in the spectrum there is a very big gap. So no fiber except for the vacuum. Uh, with uh, a formal dimension that's the here. What we can find is that uh, actually, um, given this condition, the partition function is uniquely determined. So why is this a uh, class of theory that uh, is uh, so interesting? It's a very interesting in its own right. And also, it's very interesting in the context of ADSFT because uh, if you expect some that D is equal to ADS gravity, then you may expect that uh, on the ADS side, you have the ADS vacuum, and then uh, the next excited space should be the BTP black hole. And translate into safety language, and you naturally arrive at this class of the So the question about them, and then if you apply this constraint, you realize that it may or may not satisfy the constraint. Sometimes it's satisfy the constraint, sometimes it does not. So we'll satisfy the constraint. That's why n equals one. In this case, we actually know what the theory should be. That's the monster. And then uh, the next few guys will not satisfy the constraint. And you guys uh, are equal to six. What is the theory? Uh, I don't know. The line. And I uh, so when you say you don't know which theory it is, you don't even know if there's there is such a theory. Right. So um, it's going to be that there is a two D zero comma one theory with that available, but it's uh, not clear whether it can be realized by uh, Cairo. So it's yeah. the conjectures that we have in this on that with the with the with the are correct. There should be none. Yeah, that's the like this scenario. So, um, so yes, indeed, uh, instead of focusing on what's possibly, uh, uh, what the possible and that can be realized, uh, we can look at what uh, I actually ruled out. So, for example, if I see equal to uh, 48, that's ruled out. So that's a, a famous case. And people that are doing hope that actually uh, there exists some, and the Gallup study, they can point out that. If it exists, it cannot have mounted symmetry. But actually, uh, this conjecture indicates that it can not exist. And then the next one is also the round. Those are 72 and 96 and 120 rule out. Hmm? Yeah, they are all rule um, out. Right. It, it, is, is n multiple of six always allowed? No, so that's a sort of a remark. So um, multiple of twenty-four. So yeah. Right? So if um, five times twenty-four divides c, it's actually always okay. So, um, 
long time to do that. It can be realized by parallel testing. But uh, this leads to an interesting family of uh, uh, potential cardinal functions that, uh, that are okay. Uh, maybe uh, this is what one wants from uh, ADS gravity, or maybe not. I know. Another remark is that you can apply this to also chromatic theories. Um, but actually, the constraint won't be stronger. So, because for chromatic theory, it confers borderline. And then I, actually, there are two ways of borderline. So, uh, it's good enough to look at the bottom for the purpose of the Another remark is that uh, we're not taking into account uh, flavor symmetry yet. And that's very to a Jewish comment. So, to do that, you might want some equivariant version of PMS. Presentation. So I'm still developing that. And uh, once that view is in good shape, we can understand what's the image of how what the Jacobi forms, the ring of Jacobi forms, are kind of there. Uh, what can be realized, what cannot be. And the close related question is that uh, can I use this to rule out some candidates or uh, beyond medical, whether there are some whole number that are just not allowed, whether there are some Consumption that uh, maybe it looks like producing a little bit of but it will actually not. And this is a uh, very country working on this with uh, Ming Xian Ling and uh, Nathan Benjamin. So uh, let me end here. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks a lot for the nice talk. Uh, uh, we're a bit of a time, so are there any questions for Du? Any other questions? Maybe I can make a question. Um, so I was wondering if you can elaborate a bit more on the holographic dual in the gravity side and whether you think that you can make your constraints stronger to rule out this infinite family so that you could set some light into whether pure gravity is in the swamp plan or not. So um, as you know very well, uh, this end is a uh, Related to the size of the ABS. So then um, you see that there's still an infinite family uh, that goes to infinity that are potentially okay. And this can be dual to the uh, pure ABS gravity. So I don't see how to rule out that uh, just, on, uh, 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 just on basis of these results. So, and because this constraint is a divisibility constraint. It's uh, quite different from the usual uh, swamland type of constraint, which are usually inequalities. And that might be a good thing because, well, we know that we, in the end, want to cut things down into better zero sets and maybe, uh, or maybe not, be able to do that with just inequality. So uh, it's true that this is uh, uh, qualitatively uh, different from the other constraint that we are looking at. Does that, that uh, address the question or? Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> I was hoping that maybe there is a way to make it stronger so you can rule out the infinite family, but. Well, uh, I don't know how to make it stronger and that's an uh, exercise for <laughs> to do more in the audience, yes. Maybe just a question along those lines. Um, here you're using periodic version of TMF. Is there any hope that there might be some non-periodic spectrum that you can use to describe the chiral CFTs? And so we'll sort of get, right, because it's pure, the spectrum periodic, your constraint is always going to be periodic. If you had a non-periodic spectrum, you might hope that it might give a stronger constraint for higher and higher and higher. Yeah, that's uh, a very really interesting question. So um, uh, this is related to one remark that I made earlier. It seems that uh, having a spectrum is related to um, the fact that you want the S1 signal to be well-defined. And for the one theory, that's well-defined, but that's not a chiral theory. So maybe, uh, from that perspective, you should not expect that the space of um, homotopy CFT itself to form a spectrum. Maybe a good way of saying that is still embedding that into the space of all don't come with theories. But maybe there can be other structures that we can look for there. So, thanks. Any further questions for Du? Also from our friend here, Zoom. Well then, no. thanks a lot again.
And see you next time where we will have an open mic discussion. Uh, so, see you next week. Bye bye, everyone. <laughs>